Okay, Dr. Gabrielle Lyon, fake meat. <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, it just doesn't sound right to begin with, but you know, who am I to judge? I'm just some dude on the internet. But I, I, what the heck is the problem with fake meat? Because there's a lot of back and forth on this. Yeah, it's really interesting. I think the first question becomes is why is this available? Why are people looking for an alternative to what we already have, which is a great product of real meat? Um, and I think we have to ask ourselves, why are we looking for more processed food to recreate something that already exists? Number one. Number two, um, fake meat is different than real meat, and that should not come as a surprise to anyone. Where the concern comes is that if people think it's replaceable. So if individuals are saying, well, I'm getting my protein from this fake meat, so therefore I don't need real meat, that becomes the issue because the metabolomics, the way in which these processes or they are processed in the body are different. So the metabolites, meaning you know, when you eat something, it has different byproducts. Sometimes these are nutrients, sometimes they are intermediates, and they are different. And when I say that they are different, each one has, uh, let's say they have 900, you know, they're 90% different in terms of what they break down into the body. And one third of those are unique to the fake meat, meat product, and then one third are totally unique to the beef product. Hmm. And that's interesting. It's very interesting. It's interesting because it's being spoken about as if they're interchangeable. And so let's say on a protein level, they're the same. Let's just say that on a protein level that they are the same. When you look at the back of a um, label, there's 13 common nutrients or 13 common values. But in food, there's so much more than that because food is a food matrix. In red meat, there's uh, carnitine, creatine, and serine, taurine, which we're gonna talk about. And in the uh, plant-based meat products, maybe there's more phytochemicals. So they're not interchangeable. They may be interchangeable from a protein perspective, but I think that that's a very limited view. And the way in which they break down in the body, the nutrients and those metabolomics are totally different. After today's video, I put a link down below for Sundays. I don't usually talk about dog food on this channel, but since I know a lot of my audience has them, and I have three, I care about what I feed them. So Sundays is the world's only human-grade dog food. So it's a veterinarian formulated. When I say human-grade, that means that we as humans could literally eat it. It's the highest quality. So what they're using as far as like sweet potato, as far as the meat ingredients, it's all human grade. I mean, it wouldn't taste great for us to eat, but if we're literally wanting to feed our dogs the highest quality food, we want something like that. So it's air dried, it's super delicious. Like my dogs just devoured, especially our new puppy. So anyhow, that link is down below that saves you some moolah if you wanna try them out. So I highly recommend you use that link, save some cash and try Sundays for your pups. So even if we theoretically have identical amino acid profiles, there are things that are still different. different. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's not just, well, let's put it in a different context. Like if we set, impossible, or I don't want to say even brand names, but just fake meat in general. Yeah. And we were to compare that just so that we're not seeming to have a bias towards animal protein, even though, I mean, candidly, I do have a bias towards animal protein, but let's put that aside for a second. If we were to compare fake meat to higher quality plant proteins, making up the same amino acid right. profile. Right, right. Okay. Yes. We're still having an issue with fake meat, right? Well, it's not that maybe there's a place for it, right? Maybe, you know, obviously it doesn't exist in nature. And if someone wants to eat it once in a while, uh, it's probably fine. But the reality is it, it shouldn't be thought of as a substitute for the real thing. Yeah. And that becomes important because, again, it's not just about the protein content. And it's also not just about the amino acid compound or component. It's also about these low molecular weight molecules that exist that... Um, we often don't think of, and there's, there's probably hundreds that we don't even measure in food right now. Yeah, and it's like, if I look at some of the, some of the well-rounded vegans that I know, people that really do put an effort into as much food quality as they can get in a plant-based lifestyle. And again, you know, we can have our thoughts on that, whatever, but some people that really do put their best foot forward, they're like putting the effort into combining proteins, putting the work in, you know, it's, First of all, I never, ever, ever see those people eating fake meat, right? Like they just, because then it, I think it becomes almost a, a communication issue as well as just a fundamental flaw where it's just like, why are you having fake meat? Like if you want to be plant-based, 
more power to you, that's great. Then why are you trying to have a fake meat? Like that is just like, there's a cognitive dissonance there, right? It's just, then just eat your plants and enjoy them and, and do your food combinations, right? Because you look at like, you know, DIAS score and PDCAA and like all these protein They're scores. They're coming out with a new one. What's the new one? It's called EAA9. That's essential amino acids. Yes, sir, Interesting. it is. It is. So that is on the forefront. There has been one paper published about it, which I will send you. Um, and Don is leading the charge on that. Don really? Lehman. Yep. And so they have an EAA9. And so basically what you're bringing up is that we talk about protein in this generic term, but protein makes up 20 different amino acids and they all do and have biologically diverse roles. And there we eat for those really nine essentials that we have to get into the diet. And they're all um, essential in uh, various ways. And when we take a look at these amino acid scores, they don't take into account um, the, uh, the limiting amino acid per se. In, in a way that they should, in a way that makes sense for understanding how we make protein choices. So the EAA9 is looking at very specific amino acids in uh, a, just a different way of looking at it. That's fascinating. Yeah, yeah because the you know, PDCAA is like so, it's so flawed yes. in many ways. Yes. And I arguably thought that, you know, digestible indispensable amino acid score was a little bit better because it was like, you know, non-truncated and it could kind of like continue on. So I always leaned into that a little bit better. But what looking at those two scores did do for me, which is everything we're talking about here with the metabolomics, is understanding like how the synergy of a food in its whole food spectrum Mm -hmm. makes a lot more sense. Like I was blown away by the fact that milk protein, whole milk protein had a higher DIAS score than like whey protein isolate, right? Whereas I always grew up thinking whey protein isolate is the pinnacle because it's pure, unadulterated, isolated protein. But then it goes to show that like, well, no, in its like uniform fashion with its other synergistic compounds that are in whole food, it becomes potentially more bioavailable, right? Um, And I think that's kind of what we fail to miss, or we miss the point with like fake meat, right? Like maybe we're missing these fundamental pieces that we, like, we've extracted what we think are good yeah. from these plant-based things. And well, if one is good, then more is better. So let's just consolidate all right. of these, you know, random erroneous things into one thing, but they, they, don't, they lack any of the synergistic compounds in each individual right. food, if that makes sense. Yes, um, it does. So if you're gonna eat fake meat, uh, go right ahead, but don't have it be a replacement for real foods. Can't be. When we look at, like, most of them are made up of what, like, like the primary constituent? I know they're different between, like, impossible and beyond. Yeah, and it's so usually phytochemicals. Like, okay, so it's usually... So these chemicals that don't, um, or these metabolites that don't exist in uh, animal-based foods. Like, they're just different. Yeah. They're totally, the, the composition, while the amino acid quality or the amino acid composition may be the same, these other um, metabolites are different. So it's like almost like saying, like, hey, just give me uh, all 20 amino acids in the form of essential amino acid powder and some other amino acid powder and being able to call it a complete protein when in reality it's not, like there's a lot more to it it's than just different, that. It's different, right? Yeah. It's like saying you're eating a blackberry um, so you don't have to eat an orange. Got it. It's totally two different foods. Now, are there, like actual synthetic compounds in some of these fake meats, or is it? Or, I mean, because I, I think probably. Like, yeah. I mean, I think that they're all variable. Um, they're all different. So, if someone is a plant-based person, would you, in your own humble opinion, think that it's better to say, "Hey, I'm going to combine my rice and beans, do my whole food combination thing that I have to do," however uh, cumbersome that might be? Is that probably a better strategy? In your I, opinion? I, I probably wouldn't recommend doing that. I think that the caloric load is way too high. Hmm. And I think it pushes people to become more metabolically unhealthy when they are eating the amount of protein from a plant-based diet in whole foods and being calorically responsible and being carbohydrate responsible. I think it is very difficult for an individual. What would I recommend if you are plant-based or vegan, then this is where I would recommend some kind of uh, protein powder rather than an impo- rather than something like that, like an impossible burger. No, yeah. no, that makes complete sense. I mean, I've always advocated for, you know, plant-based people to, you know, 
even as much as I don't like soy, soy protein isolate, like something that's at least complete yeah. or a hemp protein or yeah, something in that category. But then the other issue becomes, again, you're, we don't, what are the long-term effects of missing some of these other low molecular weight compounds? Yeah. Um, what do you mean by low molecular weight? So it would be like um, a taurine and okay. serine, uh, carnitine. What happens? It's not in the acute phase, right? So it's not if I didn't eat this for a month. But if you are choosing an eating pattern over decades, what is the outcome over decades of not having a diet that is somewhat balanced with other nutrients and other nutrients that we don't even know about because food exists as a matrix? When we look at like, I mean, taurine, for example, like you're only gonna pretty much get that in meat and seafood, right. predominantly red meat. Right. So what happens if you don't get taurine over time? What are the outcomes? Yeah. Well, and the literature on taurine is pretty interesting in that like, it doesn't seem to be, uh, it doesn't seem to matter, at least from a performance standpoint, whether you have it in a, like a single serving prior to a workout or you're dosing it for a month, it's the same outcome which leads me to speculate that it's a pretty instant effect with taurine, which tells me that in that same vein, perhaps you can become deficient very fast too. You know, because if dosing doesn't matter, then you could probably end up causing an issue pretty quick, albeit you could probably correct it pretty quick too, but it's like a very flash in the pan type thing, yeah. which tells me that like someone that's never eating meat and not getting these low molecular weight compounds like taurine, like, they're probably living below this bar that they don't even realize exists. Right. And it's, uh, you know, it's kind of like the, the comical thing of like, okay, you take a, like a plant-based person and they bite into steak for the first time and they're just like floating, you know? And I'm not suggesting that they need to go that route if they don't want to. But yeah, there's all these things that have a cumulative buildup, but things that might even be very short-term too. Yeah, and, and the, I think that you're absolutely, I absolutely agree with you. And then I, I think the next question is, why are we seeing this influx of processed foods that are pushing us away from perhaps coming up with a, a reasonable, healthy diet for a human? You know, why are we moving more towards processed foods? Is it because we have to feed a nation or is it because someone else has something to gain, like financial benefit? I think, just think these are questions that have to be asked. Yeah. And I mean, from a truly economic perspective, I mean, I'm no expert here, but it doesn't seem that scalable in a sustainable fashion. Um, you know, so like I, I have a hard time understanding like where, like why there would even be an incentive there. Like what is the drive? Um, I mean, it's easy if you start looking at, you know, different possible avenues, but like to scale something that is still going to, you know, actually I don't even want to go that route. That ends up opening up a lot of YouTube can of worms that I probably shouldn't go. Yeah, we don't want to do but, that, but, <laughs> anyway, but yeah, it's not yeah. scalable and it's all propaganda. Yeah. Okay, so kind of rounding the corners on all of this, what are kind of yeah. the three takeaways on, on fake meats here? So number one, fake meat is not equivalent to real meat. So you can't replace one with the other. Don't think that you're doing um, yourself justice in that way. Even if you are meeting your protein needs through fake meat, it's not the same compound. It's just not. You can go ahead and have your fake meat, but just please understand that it's different. Okay. All right. Number two. Number two, um, there is more to fake meat than just protein. And when you are choosing a processed food over a burger, you may be missing other things like creatine, taurine, and serine, bioavailable iron. And over time, um, we don't know what those implications are. And lastly, number three. Number three, let me give you a number three. Number three is uh, these are very new products. We don't know their influence on our health over time. They do not exist in nature. We don't know the effects. That's a very solid answer. All right, Dr. Lyon, where can everyone find you? They can find me on my Instagram, Dr. Gabrielle Lyon, and my website, drgabriellelyon.com, YouTube, you name it. Perfect. Well, as always, keep it locked in and thank you so much.